So I've already put the one nut on loosely. I'll tighten up in a moment, put the second one on. And please note the trolley jack's still under here. Safety first, safety last. <laughs> well, these need to be moderately tight, but yet again, refer to your manual for exact torque settings. We well, can see here the uh, tray. I couldn't find my magnetic one, so we've just got a plastic tray, which I put all the bits in when we took it out of. The two lower nuts, remember, we've already fitted on, but I want to show you the D-bolt here. This is the one that also retains the starter motor, but it's that awkward one that we get to from behind the fan housing. Now, a little trick. These are quite loose in the top of the bell housing, so I put a little bit of insulating tape, electrical tape, around the top, just a couple of wraps. And remember that it's got this flat portion, so you have to put it in the right orientation. And the idea is you push it all the way home and then just tap it in with an extension bar from your socket set with a hammer. Just tap it in that last bit and then it will hold it firm so that when you're struggling behind the fan housing to put the nut on, it can't fall off. So feel free to do that and push it into position. Just normal black insulating tape. Put a few wraps around it a little bit thicker at the back and then a lead off down the front so that you can push it in nice and easy. It's a brilliant trick for one-handed engine putting in or if your friend doesn't like going into the dark bits with things falling on the head. Okay, time to put it in and the last thing to remember of course the flat goes up against the starter motor, the round bit goes pointing upwards just to make sure you put it in the right orientation because sometimes they do jam and you need to push it all the way home. So underneath and on top of the gearbox we go. Well, if you have a friend, they'll now be lying underneath with the hand up over the top of the gearbox and be pushing that top D bolt forwards. But I've used the little insulation tape trick and now I'm just ever so gently feeling for those threads. Again, it's another one of those good ideas to run that nut up and down that thread. So that's finger tight as far as I can get it. And I could just feel the end of the bolt out of the end through the nut by a turn or two. So now it's just a case of being really gentle and patient and doing those last turns with the D end of the spanner. And again, this is one of those jobs that if you've got one of those ratcheting spanners, it's a perfect position to be using it in. The last bolt to put in then, 17 mil headed, and this is the one that uh, we have to do with the socket and the ratchet from underneath. And uh, I would suggest 17 mil, by the way, I would suggest using the universal joint because you're not sure what angle you're going to end up with down there. And I've got two short ones, a medium one. We may have to swap to a longer one, just a case of seeing how readily accessible it is. We start off, as ever, pushing it in, engaging it gently, and doing it finger tight till we know a few threads are gone, because we don't want to cross-thread it. Under we go. Well, it was worth just running this bolt through the captive nut whilst the engine was out, because it's going in finger tight nearly all the way, which saves all the messing about with the ratchet underneath because it is quite limited space but I've probably got about three or four turns to do and then it will go tight with the ratchet. So after we've put the top engine bolt back in then we can put the fuel line back on. Again you may wish to have your friend up there holding the fuel line against the engine tinware so that it doesn't push back when we put it on. Here's the fuel clamp we put on before we took the engine out and we've got a new Jubilee clip Again, available from Just Campers. It's just the right size to fit over standard Volkswagen hosing and what have you. So we need to go up here and push it on. Now you may find in cold weather that that's very, very tight. So all you need to do is have a mug of cold water and put it in here and then firmly grasp it and push it through. Or like I say, you could have a friend pushing it back from the other end. And then it's simply a case of tightening that up. Now, one thing to bear in mind, you can see here the heat exchanger right underneath the tube up here. And this is the only major fault that Volkswagen ever had because if you get a petrol pipe leak here from a rotten hose or maybe the, um, the, the metal pipe has, has worn through, it drops down onto this, which is at exhaust temperature, instant bonfire. So please double check these fuel lines, very important. And the beauty of using a proper fuel clamp like this, remember this one's available from Just Campers Online, is that they don't squash the fuel pipe up. So you can leave those on the fuel pipe clamped up for quite a few weeks and they won't damage the pipe. So we'll just put the heater tube back on that connects the heat exchangers up to the body of the beetle. And once I've done that, there's only one final job left to do, and that is reconnect the heater cables themselves. 
And please make sure you've got your glasses on because all sorts of bits can drop down into your eyes. OK, so we've got our barrel clamp here, which slides up inside the little gadget on the end of the heat exchanger operating lever. And then we push the end of the cable through the barrel clamp like that. And give it a little nip up by hand. They should be able to see it there. And then it's just a case of tightening it up with the little 8mm spanner. OK, so that's all the dirty stuff underneath finished with now. As you can tell, I'm glad I was wearing my safety glasses. A few bits of road grind came down onto me. Um, you could have a break now if you wanted, but I've still got the 8mm spanner in my hand from when I did the heater cables underneath, so it's ideal time to do the accelerator cable. And so the jobs we've got left are the lower tinware, the wiring loom connections at the top there, bring them back down again, the air filter, the accelerator cable, and finally your two heater hoses and then your engine's back in and finished. So the first thing to do is to actually remove the trolley jack so that we've got some room to work around. So we'll put our main piece of engine tinware back in then. And it is really important that your engine bay seal's in good condition. Put that down and replace the screws. Next up, we put the two little pieces of tin in behind the preheats. Don't forget they're sided, a left and a right and that should just slot straight in the back here and if there's any problems you've got them around the wrong way do the screws up. And next up we retrieve the wiring loom that we've got nice and safe out of the way feed it back in the way it was originally, clip it back in and then put all the connectors up. Remember if you hadn't done the job before you'd have used a piece of masking tape on here and written where everything went. With the tinware and the wiring all sorted, we need to retrieve the accelerator cable. You may need to use a screwdriver just to put that tube through. That's the guide tube. And then possibly a pair of pliers just to retrieve the end of the cable. But if you did it correctly while you were putting the engine in, you'd already pushed that right through. And uh, then it's simply a case of getting your barrel clamp from where you've stored it safely, putting that in and then tightening it up, obviously just a reverse reversal of what we did when we took it off. And we can replace the air filter. Remember yours could be lots of different shapes and sizes. This is the early one, but they all just push on with the little screw to do up there. And the final thing to do then is refit the 50 mil air hoses. These ones are marginal, uh, but it is a very straightforward job to put brand new ones on, and there is a how-to feature on how to do it anyway. And uh, they go back in, don't forget, they're the ones that provide the heating for the vehicle. And then finally, that lovely warm air supply for the carburetor to stop the carburetor icing up on a cold winter's morning. Well, that's all the job's done now, but we want to double check a few important things because we don't want them causing any problems, falling off down the road or maybe getting it wrong in the first place. So we go and check the accelerator cable, the throttle cable, make sure it's operating good. And again, just try it on the pedal at the other end. Double check all your wiring connections are exactly as they were to start off with. And most importantly of all, go underneath and double check that fuel line. You don't want any leaks or insecurities down there. Make sure it's perfectly safe and then we're ready to fire it up.